What's up you guys? What's good? And welcome back to the Gentle Takeover. So this segment series playlist is all about post-op, pre-op, all of the plus size mommy makeover information that you need. The one thing that a lot of people were requesting was my post-op experience. So I decided to share this week by week. Um, doing it daily isn't enough because I didn't, I don't have like raw footage except for one day in the first week that I'll share with you guys in this video. So it just didn't make sense. Um, so week is week by week is what we're going to do. With that said, each video is probably going to be extremely long. I apologize, but I will be making sure to answer every question that you think you have for me. So before we get started, I do want to beat you guys up. If you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button over here. If you're OG though, you already know what's popping, what's good. Thank you for always coming back. With that said, let's jump right into this. So day one, I'm going to kind of clump three days all together because my first three days were quite similar for me. Um, day one through three consisted of me sleeping. Um, I wasn't eating. I was sleeping, waking up for drugs, and falling back to sleep. And I was only able to sleep for hour increments. So I think that made it even harder for me. I was just exhausted. Like I was really exhausted and not being able to sleep for longer than an hour kind of just <laughs> reminded me on the hour that I was just uncomfortable. I was in pain. I was having a hard time breathing. Like it was rough. So that was the first three days. I'd literally wake up. I'd be like, Kev, I need drugs. And whatever drug I was able to take at that time, he would give me. And we just kept it pushing. That was our routine for the first three days. So I was on um, a muscle relaxer, Oxy, and an antibiotic. On day two, I noticed that my breathing had become really hard. Um, I felt restricted. Like my breathing felt restricted on day one, obviously because of my muscle repair. But this felt like something more. Like I had mucus in my chest. You could hear the, hear the rattling in my throat. I was just having a really hard time taking deep breaths, let alone holding a conversation. So if I had to ask for my medication, that was a struggle, which then leads to coughing, which is hell. I don't care if it's your second day post-op or to this day, I'm still struggling with coughing, sneezing, laughing, it all hurts. <laughs> so with that being said, having a cough on day two to clear my chest so that I could breathe, wasn't it. So I ended up getting Kev to actually send a text message to Dr. Poku and Kiani, who was my, she was, she's his like assistant in the operating room. Um, send him, her a text message just saying I, what my situation was. I was having a hard time breathing. Like my phlegm was greeny yellow. It, it wasn't the best situation, right? Um, and within an hour, she'd gotten back to Kev. She had sent over a new prescription for the antibiotics to Rite Aid, and we were switching that up on day two. Um, day three, things were starting to change, like the consistency and color of my mucus had changed, but otherwise, my days were the same. Sleep, waking up for meds, that was it. Kev was changing drains, giving me medication, and making sure that I was drinking because I wasn't eating. So for the first five days, I didn't eat anything at all, and I was solely on liquids, and that it was by choice, but not intentionally, right? Like I wasn't saying, I don't want any food. I just wasn't hungry. I was really just trying to survive, and I got a lot of stuff done. So if you're new here, this is your first video. I got Vaser, Chin, and Arm Lipo. I got Lipo 360, um, a muscle repair, tummy tuck, O curving, and contour to my hips and my butt. So a lot of stuff for one sitting, but I was just dead set on this being a one and done. Like I, I didn't know how I would recover from this surgery, how my body would respond to anesthesia, all of that kind of stuff. And it was something I'd never experienced before. So one and done sounded good in theory. <laughs> my recovery, <laughs> I'm laughing because I like, my recovery, I was like, what, why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> so with that said, that was day two and day three we were making progress. Um, as for liquids and what I was drinking, I was on Gatorade for electrolytes, water, I was drinking water like it was going out of style. Um, protein, my protein shake from Costco, it's just like this chocolate um, 
little protein shake. And Kev got Arizonas, like those green tea Arizonas from Costco as well. I was chugging, like basically whatever I could chug that was going to quench my thirst for that moment, I was drinking it. My thirst was never quenched. I just want you guys to know. I was drinking so much my tongue was fuzzy and like my mouth was still dry. It was very uncomfortable. Let's just forward to day five, to day four, to day four. So by day four, I had decided that I didn't want to take oxys anymore. I had been completely out of it for what I felt was an unacceptable amount of time, considering we had three little ones and I had people who were checking up on me. Dr. O had called to speak with me. I just wasn't able to do it. My mom had called to speak with me. I was just like, get off of my phone. Like I, I didn't want to talk to anyone and I had chalked it up to be the Oxy. So day four, I was off Oxy and on to regular Tylenol every four hours. Um, regular Tylenol was all I could take. You can't take extra strength. So I was stuck with regular Tylenol every four hours. The um, antibiotics and the muscle relaxer. Again, I chose this hell. I just preferred it over Oxy and how I was feeling with the Oxy. <laughs> I was also able to sleep for four hours that day, which I think was the most exciting part of day four for me. Um, the longer you can sleep, the better, because I feel like when you're being woken up every hour, you're just being tortured. Like you're reminded of all of the pain and like the soreness and the, just the struggle. So if you can sleep, just sleep, like just sleep. That was day four for me. Those were the only two changes that I had. I still wasn't on food by day four. So day four, no more Oxy and four consecutive hours of sleep. We're making progress. I could slowly feel we were making progress. So by day five, I had had a shower. Well, I wasn't showering. I was having sponge baths. Kevin was sponge bathing me. So day five was my first sponge bath. Um, day five was my first time consuming foods. I had like two little pieces of salmon and a piece of broccoli for lunch. And then dinner, I had some pieces of grilled chicken and like a mixed veggie melody. Um, but it, like, let me pause. It was literally like a little baby carrot and a piece of cauliflower. It wasn't anything crazy. I was just eating what I felt the desire to eat and like wasn't doing anything extra. And that kind of got my insides turning because that was also the day that I had my first poo, which was <laughs> interesting. <laughs> As somebody has pooed their whole life and I'm also very regular, um, like I poo per meal. I'm like actually very regular. Pooing was rough. It was rough and not in like a painful, you need to be worried way. It was more of like a outer body experience. <laughs> I was like, am I doing it? Is it happening? And like, what, what do I use? I couldn't feel anything. So I very much so relied on my, like I had my, my hands placed on my stomach for support and I relied on like feeling the muscles work as I sat there and tried to work through my first poop. But once I did it, I, I, I thought that I felt better. I was, I was just excited. Your girl was excited. Um, with that said, because of my muscle repair, my tummy tuck, my hips, my bum, your girl wasn't wiping. So my husband came through in terms of that as well. Um, when I tell you guys he was doing it all, he really was doing it all. There wasn't a thing that my husband wasn't not willing to do and also just wasn't doing from feeding me to wiping my butt to helping me get dressed, helping me walk, literally everything. He was doing it all. So if you're somebody who thinks that you're going to go do this alone, I don't recommend it, especially if you're getting everything that I got done in one round. Definitely have help. Even if it's like a post-op care nurse, you can find a recovery house, do it, please because it's a lot. And like, as much as you think you can take it on, I promise you, <laughs> I promise you, there's, there's days where it's just rough. So day six was my best day. And in the Dr. Apoku um, plastic surgery group on Facebook, I'll add it below for you guys. Um, and anything that I referenced today, I'll add below for you guys. So my Airbnb, where we stayed, my surgeon, his information, the Facebook groups that I'm a part of that helped me with information all down below. But by day six, I felt my best so far. And I genuinely felt like I was making progress in those groups. All of the ladies swore that by day three, 
you feel like yourself, everything starts to get better, da -da 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 -da. and I'm not mocking anyone when I do this, okay? I'm just implying that it was baloney because I looked forward to day three so heavily just based on that information. I told myself, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna get through this until day three. And when day four hit and I still felt the same, which was like I had been hit by a truck, I felt defeated. I felt hopeless. I felt like I couldn't do it anymore. And that's why I say as great as it is to have all of the information that you have and women sharing their experiences, your experiences is yours and yours alone. So me looking forward to day three didn't benefit me at all because it took me till day six to start to feel better. And like the end of day six, not woke up day six, the end of day six. So day six came. I'm feeling normal, which to me means I'm sleeping better. I didn't feel as reliant on my meds, which was huge, like huge, um, because all the days prior, I was clockwork. Like, it was bad. Kevin, and like, if you think about this, 24 hours, every hour for three days, I was waking up my husband. Like, I need this, I need this, I need this. And that's on top of him emptying my drains and doing everything else that he was doing and tracking. So that man is a blessing. Um, so to feel good at day six and be making progress and not have to worry about my meds, I felt like it was really huge. I felt like I was getting my independence back, which was really, really reassuring. I decided that I was going to try and walk independently with the walker. Kevin was very, you're not walking anywhere with the walker unless I'm awake and coherent and like know that you're good. And I had gotten to the point where because I wasn't relying on meds, I felt like I was just more there and like I could do this. So I'd like scoot around while he was napping and like try and actually get my steps in. And to me, that was me making progress. I was able to take my steps, do my little walks around without my husband. He didn't like it, but it didn't really matter. Like it was about my independence for me at that point. Um, I was still pooing consistently at day six. My, my pooping was back regardless of my intake. We were pooping, I don't know what, but we were flowing, okay, we were flowing. And day six, day six I had oatmeal for breakfast, so like a packet of oatmeal with a Macintosh apple. Um, my lunch was basically the same, like I just like picked out a couple of pieces of food and then dinner was the same. It was more so exciting though that I was just eating some stuff, right? Um, so that was day six. Now I wanna throw in a little snippet for you guys. So day four, I decided to pick up the camera. I'm not really sure why, because I actually hate this footage that I'm about to show you. Um, but this is day four for me. So although I had my antibiotics changed, I was making progress with the fluid in my lungs and my breathing. You can still hear the struggle in my breathing and also just see that I'm just not fully there which is why I was like, get me off these meds. Like I watched the video back and I was just like, no, like this can't be me. And I want to talk to my kids so bad. So another reason why Oxy had to go. With that said, this is a clip from day four. <sighs> Enjoy. What is up you guys? So it is <clears throat> day four for me. Today's day four. I definitely thought that I would have been um, documenting every day, but day one through three was hell. Actual hell. I couldn't have anticipated it being as bad as it was. <clears throat> the pain tolerance that I think I have is now null and void. It don't even matter because... <laughs> Took me out. <clears throat> With that being said, I am still on my antibodies. I believe they're muscle relaxer. I'm no longer taking the oxy. It just doesn't make me feel good. So I'm heavily avoiding it while trying my best. <clears throat> Doing any of that hurts like hell. And my chest has had quite a lot of fluid in it. 
um, day one, it was green. They changed my antibiotics, and then by day two, it was yellow. And then day three yesterday, it was clear. So making progress with that, that's exciting. It's still like, I'm not sure if you can tell. My stomach is so tight, so it's hard to just have a basic conversation. So I'm very much so on yes, no questions, like, but an open-ended question, I don't want to do it. I do want to say, shout out to all the women who have done this before, because this is, hmm, this is no joke. Like, you have to be a real beast to get all these things done at one time. And for those of you who are just skimming through, I had a chin lipo, arm lipo, vaser for both of those, lipo 360, tummy tuck muscle repair, and butt contour. And my god, this soreness. I think that's what's messing with me. It's not. I'm not in pain. It's very weird when I say that, but I'm not in pain. I'm just super, super sore. I was talking to my mom the day after I got out, and she was like, Oh, my, I bet you feel like you got hit by a truck. It's like, that's an accurate statement. I will never say that again without this context because what got hit by a truck? I genuinely feel like I got hit by a truck now. So this is day four. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to do day one, two, through three. It probably would have been scary for some people, and like I don't need to scare anyone. That's not my intention. And this video is probably scary, but it's getting better, which is why I decided to pick up the camera, because it's getting better, which gives me hope. I'm officially walking with my walker. I'm just naked. I walk around naked everywhere. Um, but with my walker, I'm not like fully bent over now. I can extend my arms, which just started today. I can roll and sit up, which just started today. I think the most exciting part is being able to walk. Um, I want Kev to bathe me tomorrow. I'm like dying, yearning for hot water to feel hot water on my skin. So, I'm looking forward to that. Other things. I have no appetite. Um, none whatsoever. So yesterday, this morning, I started taking laxatives. Because I have the intention of starting to eat soon. And I want it to be okay because I had little gas bowls in my stomach and oh my goodness. So I want to be prepared for that. Um, but I'm not eating. I'm not hungry. I'm not even thinking about food. Like I'm just like, I'm on my medication schedule and I feel like I know it off my heart. And I'll be like, babe, it's time. So I'm not really eating. I'm drinking. These. I haven't been able to do my hair. Can you tell? I'm drinking my big dirty water. And I've had like been not nibbling on some pieces of banana. Um, what else have I eaten? My grapefruit cup with success. But like legitimate meals and the meal prepping. It's not getting touched. There's just no way. I can't do it. So this is day four. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so that was day four. I hope it wasn't as bad for you guys as I feel like it is watching it back. And I feel like it's so bad for me because I know the pain that I'm in. Like I, I could feel the pain again that I was in that day. Um, so hopefully it wasn't too bad for you guys. But that was my day four. Um, I was able to talk a little bit, you know. There wasn't really too much behind what I was saying because I was so out of it, but I was talking. So with that said, this was week one for me. 
Um, I'll go over week two with you guys in the weeks to come. And if you have any questions, let me know. Just comment them down below. I will get back to you guys. I'm, I'm trying to be really good with responding to everybody's questions. Um, if you feel like it's something that hasn't been asked before, definitely throw it in there. And as it applies to whatever week I'm going to speak about, I'll include it in the video. Otherwise, um, information about my doctor is in my consultation day video. It is on my Instagram page. It's the first um, pinned video. So my doctor, the cost, where I went, where he was located, all of that kind of stuff on my Instagram, Journal of Lady Gentle. And I think that is it. That was my week one. It was rough, but as you're going to see, my weeks to come were rough as well. You just slowly make progress and you get those little glimpses of hope that make you feel like this is worth it. Um, today I am in week eight of post-op. So still very much so in the recovery side of things I shared with you guys, it still hurts to cough. Like this is just the progress or this is just the process and I'm down for the ride. So this is week one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. My next video that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is surgery day. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to go over everything because I feel like surgery day is the day that like gets your anxiety going and it doesn't need to. See you guys in the next one. Deuces!